like you do. Really, y'all don't know this, y'all in danger. I'm a threat. I'm a threat. Who is your life? Cause you know that it's a threat. It's a threat. You know I ain't letting up. My foot is on your neck. Yeah, take my word for it. It's a promise and a threat. Yeah, so we back. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, man. So yeah, you was telling us that, uh, you know, Bucky had started spitting and then Beans just start, you know what I'm saying? He start going in like, hold up, let me get it. <laughs> How yeah, was that? yeah. yeah. He, Siegel was good stumping and um, me and P ended up going back to Philly and I, they, they recorded the um, Kiss Your Ass Goodbye. And at the same time, you know, I think we was, uh, I think it was supposed to have been a 16. And then I think Siegel just went, kept going. Like, P just like, fuck it, let him just keep going. Wow. So it was like, a, so like, it's an extended version that nobody has. Wow. But it was funny. Like, in the, in the extended version, this kid was saying some incredible. He just was taking, he just was going at everybody. And it was just crazy. So it's an extended version of Kiss Your Ass Goodbye. I don't know if anybody ever got it, but I remember having it. Like, in this shit, like, shit was crazy. Like, you know, um, I remember um, even 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 when um, P was doing um, the joint with Akon, locked up. Like I knew Akon back then before Akon was Akon, and it, it was just I remember when P had the beat, and we just listening to the beat, and um, I think we was driving to Ohio, and P was just spitting the rhyme in his head, like you know what I'm saying. And I said, "Damn, this beat's going crazy." I said, "This this joint sound crazy," and this is before we even, you know, P even laid his verse. Like, we just listened to him. Like, this song is going to be knocking. Like, this, this is going to be something. And just, like, seeing Akon back then, it was it was crazy. Like, that's why I said I met a lot of dudes before they who they was. Like, blew up and everything. And it was just it's, it's still love. It's still peace. And, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, that that one was with the seagull joint. But the other epic, the number one in my book is, I think we was in a city. And it was, uh, it was, here's the funny thing. It was a MySpace event. That's how far it goes back. It was a MySpace yeah, event. Bro. And it was Black Thought. It was Quest Love. It was Fairmont. P. I um, think it was Rozelle. It was some, it was one more rapper. And we was performing. So Black Thought was up there. He, he like, you know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, this is for the real hip hop heads. And he just started like, yo, Quest, throw a beat on. So Quest started doing the drums and we on stage and, and like he started freestyling. He like, yo, I'm going to pass it to P. P start freestyling. He like, I'm going to pass it to Bully. I start freestyling. Then it just was going back and forth, like in a cipher, like Paramount, all of us going back and forth on the cipher. And I was more excited because I'm on stage doing freestyles with these dudes, like nothing written, nothing written off the dome. Like, and, 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 and niggas was just like, yo, and I was like more excited, like, yo, I'm on here. That's like me, Michael Jackson. Like, this is, I mean, what's love and the roots and, you know what I mean? Bats. Bars at that. So that was that was my best time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that that's love, man. I mean, like it's, it's been rumors, it's been rumors around, man. Speaking of battling, it's been rumors floating around of J. Hood and Cassidy battling, man. Could you let us know anything about that? Are you familiar with that? Has that really happened? Or I think Cassidy came to the studio and they just was spitting. Okay, it wasn't no. It wasn't like no battle, you know. Oh. What I mean, just dudes, you know. Cass Cassidy loved that, so Cassidy was spitting and everything. Cassidy just was spitting, and um, that's another good friend of mine. You know what I mean? Cassidy always got love. You know what I mean? I I, I remember times that we was in Harlem, and um, I think he was driving a white Bentley. I think it was it may have been Swiss Bentley. He was driving, and you know what I mean? He'll pull over, yo, bullet. You know what I'm saying? He had to drop top Bentley, like, you know what I'm saying? It was it was always love. Like I said, yo, I met so many people in the industry and did so much joint. Like, you know, it was always love. So I can't never take nothing away from my career or what I've done. You know what I'm saying? So I did a lot. And, and I met a lot of people in this game and, and know who was real, who was fake, and who was phony. Like, being, you know, on stage 
rocking out with Ghostface and, and Red Man, Capadonna and them. And we was on tour together. And, and, you know, just like I know in Chicago, me and Ghostface, like, you know, he was on his, like, science mathematics joint. Like, he's like, yo, let's build, son. And it's like five in the morning. Like, we like, I'm like, all right, you know, we, we chopping it up about shit. Like, you know what I mean? And being in Chicago and we went to Corona Queen, like, the Corona, what is it, Corona Greens, whatever, that hood. Like, you can't, you got to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody to be in there. And we was there, like, we was in that hood. Like, it was like, you know what I'm saying? Being out in Little Rock when... When, when when dudes is like, yo, really testing your gangster out there on the, on the road. Like, dudes were like, you know, I remember me and P was out there and, and came from Little Rock, pulled out a, like, little short dude came out, pulled out a hammer, like, yo, what's up, man? I, I, I listen to your lyrics, man. I want to know if y'all about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So me and P, like, he like, I caught you slipping. They know me and P caught his ass slipping. Told him, what's up? We, we about that life. Yeah. Homie like, yo, I love that, man. That's all I just wanted to know. Like, he like, nigga, you just put out a hammer. He like, ah, I just wanted to test your gangster. He like, yo, y'all really about that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, man. yeah. It, 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 anybody, I need to cut you off. Anybody that know anything about y'all, man, that's what makes it so genuine, man. It's because y'all really, you know what I'm saying, really come from that, really was about that. You know, like like your music hit hit the heart differently, man. It's a whole different yeah. language, man. Yeah, and, and you know what? I, I respected that our music was so real, and, and it, 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 we was about we was about what we talked about, and you know what I mean? What we did, we was in um either Boston, and uh, we was doing a mom and pop shop at the time, pop store, and we signing autographs and everything. And yo, when I mean it was flooded, it was so flooded, and it was like. 90 degrees out there. So, you know, me, I'm, I'm a big dude, so I'm hot. I go right outside. I got my jury on and all that joint, and I'm just sitting outside the store. And the dudes are them looking at me like, what you doing outside? I'm like, what? They're like, dog, niggas don't come outside. I'm like, niggas hot in there. I'm, niggas like, yo, nah, niggas don't really come outside. And I said, dog, this is a hood. I said, I'm from the hood. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Just respect it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It goes, it works both ways. Like, the hood is the hood. If I don't feel like I can be safe in any hood, like, it, it's crazy. And you know what? The, the dudes in them just was like, yo, yo, you real, my nigga. Like, I thought, like, you got your jewels on. Niggas was real. I see your dog. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's just like everything going, like, it's going to happen. We're going we gonna to get busy, though. And niggas was like, yo, oh, I respect that. After that, yo, Walk right across the street, ordered like a uh, 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 fifty piece of chicken, got some water, got some liquor. We outside, we chilling. Now everybody in the hood, like yo, these niggas is ready. Look to them, come out, say nigga, what the fuck? They're like nigga, you in the hood, you outside, you eating chicken and drinking, and man, it's hot in the store, man. Buy the album, but yo, this is, and you know what? They gave, it was more love that niggas would just start laughing, like yo, it's funny you can go to any anywhere and niggas respect that you you. You know what I'm saying? They're like most niggas tucking their chain, they, they they hide and they don't ever want to be seen. And you actually, nigga, give me a crate. I'll sit here and pop sunflower seeds with you and chop it up about what's going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's all I need. And you know what I mean? Dudes respect that. Real recognize real. And like, like I said, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. I've been I've been with um OG, uh rapper forte. West Coast. A lot of people might not even know about Rapper Forte. Uh, OG, OG, Triple OG. That's the dude um, Drake stole his lyrics. What? Remember, Drake, remember he sold, remember that song? Um, uh, uh, what it is, what it is. That that song? Uh-huh. If you go back and listen, to, that, was, that was Rapper Forte whole joint. And he sold Drake. I think he I think he walked. I don't think he won like two million or some shit like that. Like, oh, Jay gave him two, two million. I know he what stole his whole flow. I know what you're talking about. I heard him talking about that on the radio where somebody yeah. was trying to do Drake, but I'm still in lyrics. That's That's rapper, yeah, that was rapper Forte. Like, and rapper Forte is OG. Like, Pac, Pac and him used to like Pop Snoop. They, they looked up to him. He was the first like real original West Coast dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was out there doing a show like um, 
with him. And, you know, I was performing. I was the only one from the East Coast. So, you know, I had did a joint with J-Rock out there. Me and J-Rock had a song, you know what I'm saying? And um, I'm like, you know, since I'm on the West Coast, I might always do some, you know what I'm saying? I got this Tupac freestyle that I do. And when I did it, like the crowd went so crazy. And right before Taste stopped my whole set and just came out there, I thought it was like some beef or something. He's like, yo, my nigga. All I'm going to do is tell you to perform this song one more time, my nigga. He said, yo, you just brought chills to my spine. I'm looking at him like, where are you? Like, yo, yo, bring that shit back. Yo, I, I think I performed it like three times. That's how bad the crowd was going crazy. And and it, it was just so flavors. And, and, you know, we kicked it after that. We did a song together. He took me to the hoods, took me to the gang hoods. Like, I went to Grape Street. I went to the... Um, yeah. Hey, I went to like yo, I went where it was real at. I seen grandmas and them with flags. I seen that's why I said like when they when they when they like the West Coast really wept they rep they shit. Like was you know, you got a lot of dudes saying on blood on crip, like me being over there was really bloods and crips, like on some real, real shit. Like, yo, Man. cuz what's that about? You know what I'm saying? And, and and it's real. Grand I seen grandma throwing up gang signs, OG ladies, triple OGs, OGs, like Babies wearing like blue flags and they they, they you gotta drink grape soda. Glad like you know what I'm saying? I had a Coca-Cola in my hand. Niggas like, yo, nigga, you better put that shit down. I'm like, don't doubt. <laughs> nigga had to wear a white tee. You know what I'm saying? Just to show them like, yo, what, what you you print blood? Nah, nigga, I'm neutral. I'm just me. You know what I mean? I respect their gang, but I'm just me, man. It's, it's, it's real like that. I got dog. I got stories for days. I'm like big with a story to tell. Damn, that's heavy, man. And um, you know, and speaking on big, man, because that was the question I had later in the interview, but I'm gonna just jump to it now. We all know that's like like kissing them, like they was they was walking shit down with big. They had a you know a relationship with them through music, through bad boy. Have you ever had a chance to meet big? Nah, that was the only thing. Okay, okay. That was the only thing. I might caught a glimpse of him going from like from one spot to another and mm -hmm. shit like that. And you know what's so funny? Once again, I got a story to tell talking about Big, right? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the funny thing. Um, Kiss was doing that song with um, Faith, Letter to Big or whatever. And I just happened to be in the studio that day and um. Kiss and Faith in them, they was recording in one room. And I walked past. All I know, Kiss, like, yo, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Like, bullet, come here. I heard my name called, went back in there, like, what up? And it was like, yo, this is Bully, Bully, this is Faith. I'm like, yo, how you doing? She was like, yo, you walk by, I caught chills. Because I had a, I had a, I had a hoodie on, red hoodie on. I had blue jeans, blue Levi's, and a pair of constructs. And she thought, and I had my chain out. And so she was I, like, yo, she was like, yo, I thought I seen Big walk by. Because yeah. the song she was recording, she was like, I swore I saw Big walk by. And they're like, nah, that's Bully. She like, no, I think I saw a ghost. And they're like, nah, that was Bully. And, and it's funny, she looked at me, she's like, wow, you you got like the same outfit that he'll have on. I'm like, where? She's like, yeah. She's like, yo, why you didn't try for um, Victorious? I'm like, what are you talking about? She was like, yo, they, you know they shoot the movie for Big. Like, I'm like, nah. She's like, yeah. She was like, yo. She's like, enough was there. He was like, she was like, enough. Don't he can play the part for Big? I was like, looking like that, hell yeah. So she was like, yo, I think she called Miss Wallace up and was like, yo, you know, I got somebody who looks like your son. Like, and the next thing you know, it was like, oh, nah, they just gave it the gravy. Dang. So when they said, when she said that, she looked at me again and she started laughing. She's like, he looks like gravy too. Like, so it was more funny. Like, damn, you look like great. You could have so it was like, damn, I was seconds away to have that role. Could have been a notorious. Yeah, yeah man. And I, it was I, funny. I, me, me and Luce went to the um the movies to watch it. And you know, at the end they thought I was gravy. So I was dying laughing, like I'm not gravy. <laughs> <laughs> so it was more funny. Damn, man. That, that's that's funny. heavy, man. That that's heavy. You damn. know. You know, next I got to touch up on Bully. Like, you know, can you let the people know the role that Mary J. Blige played on, you know, people from Yonkers as far as, like, her being, like, the 
like one of the first people that made it on the, you know, like a um a deal level. And as far as her coming back to the community and still motivating people. Yeah, um I didn't know Mary t- too well, but I know she was from the hole and everything. And um Mary was um doing her thing and like she was with the bad boy joint and um I know um Kissing them had um the mixtape and it was you know the bomb squad before they was the um locks, they was the bomb squad and you know what I'm saying? Um, they had the mixtape bomb squad. It was go, it was killing it. Then they then they got uh, I think they got signed to somebody like some little joint, and they changed it. They had warlocks. It was called the warlocks afterward. So then they was just you know what I'm saying they had mixtapes in the streets going around. You know, people just looking for them and and, and loved it. You know what I'm saying? And um, I guess when they signed to these dudes, they just took off. They took off the um wall and it just became the locks. And you know, you know, Mary already had passed the CD to the um bad boy and Diddy and them and they had that whole thing popping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's heavy. They can tell you more about that story because I was still like in the streets rapping, you know what I mean, doing my own little thing. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Like I was um I was doing um MC battles Yay! in Westchester College. I was doing MC battles and stuff, and it was funny because Fat Man Scoop was the host, and it was a MC battle. It was for it was a hundred MCs battle in Westchester. It lasted for three days, and it's it's funny because I won that. You know what I mean? I battled a hundred MCs, and, I, and you know at the end of the day, I was the last one standing. Me and my man Jinx, my man Jinx from um Yonkers, he was with X from Bloodline. You know what I'm saying? Jinx, Jinx was, um, you know, with X at the time. They had their own little, you know, crew then. You know what I'm saying? He signed, he, X signed him. You know what I'm saying? He was a person from the hood. So it was just me and him at the end standing. And, you know what I mean? I won. And um, me and Fat Man Scoop been cool to this day. The most funniest thing that a lot of people don't know, Sav from Def Jam and, and Fat Man Scoop's are brothers. You know what I'm saying? They never knew that. A lot of people didn't know that. Like, yeah. Hey. Brothers, Damn. and it was just funny because I was with Sav, and then he was talking. I'm, I'm seeing him Facetime. I'm like, Fat Man, I'm like, that's Fat Man Scoop. He's like, yeah, that's my, that's my big brother. I said, get the hell out of here. And I'm like, we on the tour bus, and we just laughing. He like, yo, I remember you from the Hundred Man MC battles. I'm like, yeah. He's like, yo, that's crazy. Now I see you. Now you with these niggas, and I'm like, yo, it's crazy. So you know what I mean? I feel like Fat Man Scoop is one of the most underrated people that was a person that was connecting things like he was really connecting stuff bro you had like urban expressions and things of that nature bro like he yeah. was a he was a real important factor for like early in the game and stuff like that yeah. I, feel like, I feel like he get overlooked a lot man he was real important to the yeah. culture and you know what's so funny because like when we went overseas to, to, to um do a tour overseas and um the funny thing Fat Man Scoop was overseas was like Jay-Z over here because their music is like a year back. So at the time, Fat Man Scoop had that crooklin clean, Fat Man Scoop. And that was the shit. And, no, and, no, and at the time, that they, they was like, he was like Jay-Z over there. Damn. Fat Man Scoop was the shit over there. Like, and you know, we had um, you know, Locks was always performing all about the Benjamin, so it was crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, and like going across seas was a, was a whole different experience for me because it might have been one black person in the town so imagine seeing five black dudes and everybody's big or whatever like me and Luch was big so everybody in the town was like 110 pounds so at the time you know people looking at us like I walked to McDonald's and the whole like whole shit stopped so I'm like oh I'm in the wrong place wrong time I better get the hell out of here before they kick my ass <laughs> and I ain't even change. I ain't even to exchange my money. I didn't change my money over. I ain't knowing about changing your currency when you get over there. I paid forty five dollars for a Big Mac and fries. Damn. That was ah, the most expensive damn. McDonald's meal I ever paid for. <laughs> and it was so funny. Like they kept calling me um chocolate candy. 
So I'm like, chocolate candy? So the guy was like, nah. He was, at the time, remember the Axe commercial when they had the chocolate man? <laughs> so that's, that. and, and, and over there, like I said, it might be like one black person in town and he barely comes out. So imagine mm-hmm. seeing black people over there. Like, black people doesn't really be over there in that town. Or, it's not a, a area that black people be at. So to them, it was more of, I never seen a, a, a black person. So Dang. it was crazy being overseas. Like, like over there, Guess was like Prada and Gucci Louis. Um, Puma was like Louis Vuitton and 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 Jimmy Choo and all that over there. Like, and uh-huh. we used to sing. Um, right before we opened up, we do this. We, they had a soccer song. We used to sing, and they used to go crazy. Like. We used to sing it in their language, so they, you know, they went crazy for us. And then we do all about the Benjamins and all that shit. So it was, it was fun. It was a fun experience overseas. You said Different y'all culture. Sung, you said y'all sung it in their language. Yeah. Damn. I how y'all that. Damn, it was, y'all. A, it was. Huh? How how y'all do that? Because you know it's like a whole like they because they, put like this being drunk every night. And and they started singing, they started singing it and chanting it, and then you get used to. We was over there for like a month for some change, so it was just like we were just oh, we got used to singing that shit. <laughs> Word, she was players yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, it was a different heavy, culture, man. like yeah, going across yeah. seas is a different going going across seas. It's a whole different world. And I, I, I think everybody in their mother should always go somewhere to see the other side of the world. When you see the other side of the world, it's something different. It's some culture. It's something like where we was at. They was like, yeah, this is where the war was at. They call this the they, they call it the red the red town. I'm like red town, like the red the red wall floors. I'm like, why is it like it's red? They like looked at it. They're like, that's blood. That's old stained blood. They used to have battles here. So I'm like, damn. Niggas died here. Like, shit was, culture was different. Like, shit is real. So I suggest for everybody, whoever, you know, to go overseas at least one time and experience some shit. Damn, that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful right there, man. Uh, you know, bully, next I got to touch up on, like we spoke on earlier, you grew up with, with P and Kissing and, and Looch. Like, at what point and how did the 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 point come to where as though you became deep block? You became deep block because you know you grew up with them and all of that. At what point and how did that come about to to where you you was like, you know what, I want to take this rap stuff serious now? Like how how did that come about? Battling uh, major figures that day after we battled major figures like the tw- the same the twice and um. Me and Luce was speaking, and Luce just was like, you know, my name was Big Man at the time, before Bully. So I'll be like, Big Man, a.k.a. the Big Bully. See me in the corner with a gun in the black hoodie. Like, it all used to say that shit, like, you know what I'm saying? So it would be like, Big Man, a.k.a. the Big Bully. So, like, Luce was like, nah, I, don't, I don't like the big. Take the big off, because you got big pun, big this, big this. So it was like, you know, they'd be like, yo, big bully. Daddy. Or bully. Daddy. Like, yeah, bully. Daddy. So one time Daddy. we went, what, mama? Give me water. Right. <laughs> so one time we was in the um booth and we was doing a song. Uh, me, Bucky, T uh T Waters. T Waters was signed with Death was um so so deaf at the time, I believe. And he was getting ready to either go so so deaf. Daddy. Oh, deep block. He didn't know where he wanted to go at the time, and um, we was all in there, and um, we had this song. It's called Nobody, and P was like, "Only one of y'all can get on that." Man, he like, matter of fact, everybody can get on it. Y'all just got to go hard or go home. So it was me, T Waters, Bucky, um, Straws. Uh, I think it was Ty, and the next day, like. Came in there. He was like, he told he told me and um, Straws, I gotta go hard because y'all gotta go home right now because y'all didn't make the cut. He's like, I need y'all to go hard or go home, nigga. So I'm like, oh, all right. He said, take the beat, study it, come back, put some shit to it. 
that wasn't it. I need you to come hard. So came back next day, went in hard. He was like, that's what I'm talking about. And um, Lucha at the time was like, yo, he's like, yo, you need something behind that. He's like, yeah, because Lucha was like, yeah, your name Bully. And he was like, yo, you need something behind Bully. Like, it just sound plain. So I'm just in there like, I'm hearing it. He like, listen to yourself when you spit. And he like, yo, listen to like something. You got to have something in front of Because I was like, bully. And I'm just like, bully, bitch. He was like, that was it. He like, that was it. So that was my always, bully, bitch. You know what I'm saying? You know the name. Who are you? Bully, bitch. So that's how that came about. That's how the bully came about. I took the big man off and just left it bully. I, you know I got to say that. I got to say the bully bitch, that joint stuck as hard as Kiss laughing on the tracks. You understand? Know exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that ring to it, bro. I ain't even going to hold you. Yeah, I, I, I always love when I hear people, bully bitch. That was my that was my joint. It was like, the, that's what it was like. He was saying, like, you had to have a signature joint. Like, Kiss got the mm-hmm. laugh and, you know, P, P got, like, ghost or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Everybody had their uh, own signature. He's like, yo, you need a signature. And that bully bitch was my signature all the time. They loved that. And the crowd loved it. The people loved it. And I stuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that's a heavy salute to you for that, because that joint definitely no stuck. You can't say bully without the bitch, man. You know no what? 